Hey guys, what's up? This is Mel, and I'm here to talk about The Flash, episode 316, titled Into the Speed Force, which premiered Tuesday, March 14, 2017, on the CW. I'm recording on the 16th, so it's been a few days, um, but last few days have just been a little crazy for me. Um, so I'm recording it now. So huge spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the episode already, go do so first, then come back and see what I have to say about the episode. Otherwise, my other video reminders are up on screen. Take a moment to remember your remember <laughs> sorry remind yourselves of those and let's start with the 10 minute clock and let's begin with what happened in this episode so timeline wise you can kind of say it immediately picks up from the previous episode because barry's shoulder is still healing after his confrontation with a savitar so maybe it's been an, an hour or so or something i don't know but it's definitely picking up right off right after so episode reminder though is the fact that we get to see the intricate workings of the speed force once again villain being Savitar as well, but also the Speed Force because they're not as accommodating to Barry as they were before um, in uh, the in season two. So there's that. Um, breakdown for the storylines in this episode were um, basically you could call it what happens in the Speed Force and then also what happens back on Earth 1. Um, so inside the Speed Force, you see Barry um, going to try to find Wally. Um, we, we get... Since we know the Speed Force can take on the form of anybody that they wish, um, it takes on the form of Eddie Thawne, Ronnie Raymond, um, uh, Captain Cold, and also we get to see um, um, the Black Flash again, or um, the new uh, new Death Speedster, I guess you can say. Um, but don't know if that's the actual one or if that's the Speed Force's um, Mirage version of it, though. But anyways, with these um, um, forms of the Speed Force, they always t they always talk about how these three would have lived very different lives if it weren't for Barry and how they each had to sacrifice um, themselves in order for Barry to continue on. Um, with Eddie Thon, he um, he he sacrificed himself so that Barry um, could live on. Um, since sac Eddie sacrificing himself meant that Eobark Thawne never existed. Uh, we got Roman, Ronnie Raymond um, sacrificing himself um, when the whole vortex opened up after something which Barry created and um, in order for Barry to live and move forward, Ronnie ended up sac um, dying in that whole um, um, issue, um, forcing Martin Stein to find another partner in Jack. So there's that. Captain Cold um, was said to be inspired by Barry, which led him to actually sacrificing himself to save the Legends team back over on Legends of Tomorrow. So there's all these mentions of it all coming back to Barry. And the Speed Force wanted Barry to realize that it had to be Barry who finished off Savitar once more. He couldn't just push it off to Wally to do. He had to do it himself. So then we also get Barry getting help from the real Jerry Garrick, who ends up taking a Wally's place inside this um, Savitar's imprisonment in the Speed Force because Barry wouldn't leave until Wally went with him. So Jerry Garrick is going to stay in his place for the time being. Um, now back on Earth-1, though, we see um, Jesse um, going after Savitar, and while she kind of gets her ass kicked, she does find out that... The man underneath the armor is just a man. Savitar isn't a god. There is actually a human being underneath that armor because he can be hurt. She actually found a weak spot in his armor, stabbed him, and he recoiled and ran away um, before any more harm could be found. So that was the one tidbit we learned from Savitar that they can now use to their advantage somehow. Last moments of the episode showed... Barry telling Iris that he needs space um, after she had told him that um, she understands why he proposed to her the way he did and that even though the timing could have been better, um, he still proposed to her out of love. Um, so there's that. So while she kind of, it seemed like she kind of accepted it and she wanted to still continue on with the engagement, Barry said that he has to, he needs space and he needs to take time too. Uh, fully embrace the fact that he has to take on Savitar and then what that could mean for them or something along those lines. So he actually puts the brakes on that, so that was a little surprising there. But tidbit-wise, though, um, we find out that in the Savitar's um, uh, imprisonment, Wally was actually reliving his mom's death. Um, 
stuck in a time loop, I guess you could say, just reliving it over and over and over again. That, that's rough for him, for sure. Um, also, at the end of it, we see Jesse going to Earth 3 to be the Flash uh, there while Jay Garrick is away. So um, she um, leaves in this episode. Um, so there's that. So most shocking moment of the episode, guys, was the fact that the Speed Force... What surprised me was that the Speed Force kept reinforcing the fact that Barry had to be the one to stop Savitar. In all the ways that it kept reinforcing that, um, it couldn't have been more clear that it had to be Barry to stop Savitar. So, it's that. I was a little surprised by that because, like, I would have been surprised if it had to be someone else who had to defeat um, the enemy. But I guess this time, um, they just weren't having it. And I guess it makes sense. You kind of can't push off your problems to other people. But maybe if he had the assistance from Wally, that might change things up. So it was just surprising just in how many ways and in how many forms they were trying to get that message across to Barry. So there's that. Uh, moving on to top three favorite moments. I have to say uh, the first one has to be all the familiar faces we got to see within the Speed Force. For sure, we got to see the return of Eddie Thawne, Ronnie Raymond, and... Um, Leonard Snart, or Captain Cole, it's just very interesting to see them, to also see the different scenarios we could have gotten from them if they had survived, um, and then also just to see how um, the Speed Force interpreted their lives and how it could have gone. And it's just interesting to see the Speed Force embody them and then how they interact with Barry the way they did. So there's that. I definitely miss them the three characters, because they definitely made very good points. I mean, at one point in time, Eddie was supposed to marry Iris. At another point in time, Ronnie and Caitlin could have started a family together. Um, so there's that. Um, Leonard Snart, Captain Cole, could have not joined the Legends team if it weren't for Barry indirectly, I guess you could say. He could have still continued with his life of crime, for all we know. So it's very interesting. It's always great to see familiar faces like this, for sure. Um, second favorite moment for me has to be all the little contributions that HR did in, the, in this episode. They're very prominent, too, because HR actually worked around on giving the team the idea of creating a tether for Barry for when he went into the Speed Force so they can still monitor where he is and pull him out if they needed to. So that was great. And then also when he gave Jesse the idea of there has to be a weakness in Saboteur's armor, there has to be a kink in it that she can use. So in those great moments, he... He was the man with the idea, and he gave it to a team that made it um, come to fruition. So I really liked that. It was interesting how he was able to get to those um, light bulb moments, as you will. It seems like he rambles until he gets to that point of, like, instead of writing, like, you know when you're um, working on a math equation, and it's always that you have to have the two sides balance out and you just work at it until you find a way for it to balance out and stuff like that. It, it kind of seemed like that. Instead of on paper, you, you kind of like a, a verbal match type, match up type thing, if that makes sense. But I really like seeing that, though, for sure. This episode definitely showed um, HR being an asset to this team instead of just being on, on the sidelines, I guess you could say. Uh, third favorite moment for me has to be um, the fact that we got to um, we got to learn that Savitar is actually just a, a regular man or a regular speedster underneath the armor. It's just that he has this very impressive armor they have to get past. And it's if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but is the armor kind of sort of alive in a sense though? But let me know about that um, if you guys have any answers about that. Moving on though to top three peeved moments. Um, the main peeve I had, though, was the fact that Jesse repeated Wally's mistake by going after Savitar alone. Yes, she able to find out something critical from that little setup, but that it was still a huge mistake that or a huge risk that she took. And it was seemed like it just I was like, did you not just learn from what happened to Wally? I mean, are you really going to walk right into another trap? Are you really going to go in unprepared? Are you really going to go in without anyone else watching your back? It's just really, I mean, come on. For the flash of Earth 2, you really do not think at all before you run in head first. It's just like, I didn't like it at all. I thought Jesse was better um, at this, especially with who her father is. He's methodical as he is. And Jesse's supposed to be a genius and everything. Like, shouldn't she? 
But I guess it just proves that her emotions were really clouding her judgment in this one. So there's that. Now, what moment will I remember most when I look back on this episode? Speed Force. For sure, hands down. Moving on, though, very quickly. Random questions. Number one. How did Future Barry trap Savitar in the Speed Force to begin with? It's looking like Present Barry is going to have to figure that out in order to enact it again if he ever wants to get Jay Garrick out of the Speed Force trap. So there's that. Second question. If Jesse is going to Earth 3 to fill in for Jay Garrick, then who is filling in for her as the Flash on Earth 2? Seems like she forgets. She keeps claiming that on Earth, on back on her, on her Earth, she's the Flash, like the real Flash. It's like yes, but you abandoned Earth two to come to Earth one and live out, live with your boyfriend. So who exactly is protecting your Earth? Who exactly is the speedster they call upon? So it's just like, well, which is it? Anyway, since the timer went off, let's go to predictions very quickly. This is an exciting one because. The prediction, the promo for episode 317 is the crossover, the musical crossover with Supergirl. Because we see Barry and Cara Danvers are stuck in a musical reality created by the music Meister, which is played by Darren Chris. Now it looks like um, Joe, um, Professor Stein, and Malcolm Merlin are also in the episode. It looks like also if you die in this musical reality, you actually die in the real reality reality and i guess you could kind of consider it being a four-part crossover in this one episode um even though they are in their own musical reality because of the fact you have the flash obviously being represented you have supergirl being represented through kara you have legends of tomorrow being represented through professor stein and you do have arrow represented through malcolm merlin although you could argue that that's also legends of tomorrow at the moment but still you have that. But based off the synopsis, though, for 317, it reads that Barry and team are surprised when Monel and Hank, Hank, Hank Henshaw arrive on their Earth carrying a comatose Supergirl, who was whammy by the Music Meister, which happens at the tail end of the, the coinciding Supergirl episode. So, anyways, unable to wake her up, they turn to Team Flash to save her. However, the Music Meister surprises the Flash and puts him in a similar coma, one that Team Flash can't cure. Kara and Barry wake up without their powers in an alternate reality where life is like a musical and the only way to escape is by following the script, complete with singing and dancing to the end. Now, I have to say, I am so excited for this Flash's Supergirl crossover because it's also kind of a Glee reunion, too, because... Grant Gustin, Melissa Benoist, and um, Darren Chris, aka the Music Meister, were all on Glee. So I'm totally excited to see that happening. Um, it's just great to see because um, a lot of the um, the stars in the Arrowverse have musical backgrounds. So they actually have an episode solely focused on them and have it actually make sense why they would be jumping in a song. It's just going to be fantastic to see. We also... Already in on the Legend of Tomorrow, we've seen Professor Stein bring out his musical chops because of certain covers that he's had to take. We saw um, er- Joe um, singing um, through his Earth 2 doppelganger, so there is that. Um, so I'm definitely... And then we also saw Barry singing when he went to karaoke with Caitlin. So I'm definitely excited to see it full on musical going on right now so i'm excited to see that um also it would just be great to see monel and hank henshaw on earth one since um only kara has been over um into the um earth one um arrowverse for us so i'm super excited to see that for sure um um but also on um uh, uh, prediction as a whole i think at this moment it looks like barry may have to find a way to trick savitar back into the speed force prison but it's um it's gonna it's looking very tricky though looking very tricky for sure though um but that's about it guys so what did you guys think of the episode what did you guys like about it? what do you think is going to happen next let me know in the comments down below i'd love to hear your own thoughts theories predictions about all that and also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check my other videos if you haven't done so already. Also, if you want, check out my Tumblr page. The link for that is down below. I read blog promos, web clips, quotes, gifs, synopses, news, all that good stuff, all found in one place. So go check that out and follow me there if you like. It's also connected to my WordPress account, which is also connected to this YouTube channel. It's all connected together, um, anything I post online, so you can check it out there. It's a work in progress, though, my WordPress account, so keep that in mind. 
but you can follow me there if you like as well. And that's what it guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you come back next week to hear what I have to say about the super, uh, what I have to say about the crossover episode. But until then, guys, this is Mel. Wish you a great day, great week, wherever you are. Bye for now.